Now, pay close attention. This isn't something you see every day. All right, welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk about the G.I. Joe classified Richard Blinken Smythe, also known as the Cobra Dreadnought Buzzer. Now here's the box. I mean, I have to say this has got to be one of the best boxes that I've seen with the uh, <laughs> with the artwork on it. Um, only because of the fact that I mean, this is well, this is what you would think of when you have a dreadnought, and uh, it's cool because he's in a gas station. You can see his motorcycle out here. They got the Cobra poster up there. Then you have the actual. His amp, his guitar, his drum set, and the grape soda, which is I thought was pretty cool, right there. And and he has his uh, um, he has his chainsaw, which actually has a little bit more paint app on it here in the photo. Point being is, it looks like he just created this this uh, uh, chainsaw. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, the artwork is very 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 nice. Now this guy here, he is. 106 in the line here you have some more artwork here you have the stuff on the back and of course the qr code that leads you absolutely nowhere yeah but it's there so let's get this guy out of the box let's take a look at what uh yeah this guy comes with because uh dick blinken here he uh comes with quite a few things so let's get him out of the box and let's have a look all right so now that we have buzzer out of the box i have to say i mean Wow, wow. He is just so reminiscent of back in the day from when I was a kid and I had the Dreadnoughts along with Zartan and his crew. Yeah, this this definitely, definitely. The cool thing is, is that you can actually, you know, he, his glasses are removable. And of course he comes with a plethora of weaponry. Uh, you know, this guy here, he was a specialist in demolition, civil, uh, you know, uh, um, disturbance his weapon is a diamond tooth chainsaw which is pretty cool uh you know here's the thing this guy's a psychiatrist right if i'm wrong just leave it down in the comments down below but I'm, I'm pretty sure he's he was a psychiatrist or something like that um but he is the smartest dreadnought on zartan's team when it comes to the dreadnoughts not you know when it comes to zartan and his brother or sister just the dreadnoughts alone Anyway, anyway, let's take a look at this guy here, man. Let's take a look at the paint. Let's take a look at the sculpt that they have done for us here. And I mean, wow. I mean, look at this guy. I mean, that's absolutely beautiful. Look at his face. Oh, sorry. Camera keeps moving on me. Uh, the sculpt is, is, is just amazing here. So here you have, you have the ponytail. I like the way the hair brushes back. Then you have the face sculpt and you can still see his teeth right there like you could in the original one. I think in the original one they kind of stuck out a little bit more. Uh, you know, and this guy from being from Cambridge, England, I mean, it's it's funny because maybe that's what they're trying to do, that English, like Austin Powers type thing with the teeth. But the cool thing is he still has the dog tags here on his chest. He has this uh, police badge here or sheriff's badge here on his chest that he got or that he had in that one episode from um, the day that never ends. And then you have a smoke bomb here or flashbang, whichever one that this one is. And then you have a grenade, which is actually cool. You got the open butterfly collar on here. And then leading down, you have his skull and crossbones with this cod piece, his studded rock and roll type belt, not rock and roll, the, 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 the character rock and roll, you know, the eighties. <laughs> and then, of course he has his cobra tattoo with the knife going through and then i like the way they did the hair on the arms which is actually really really nice and then he has a watch here right on the back of the wrist and that's pretty cool because you have you can see actually see the hands it's not digital so that's cool and then moving down we have the uh thigh pads here with his uh holster for his gun and then you have the sheath on this side for his knife Moving down to the legs, of course, just typical regular blue jeans. Now, he does have pegs here. He's not pegless. So, pegless arms, but pegless, not pegless legs. It's kind of strange because you're kind of taking a step back. But that's just my opinion before somebody freaks out and gets all upset. 
The only thing I have with mine is that this leg is going off to the side this way for whatever reason. It's not straight. Like this one's straight and it's not gapped out. This one's gapped out right here. Like this has a gap on the side, this one doesn't. So it's not that they messed up. I think it's just the way that it was when he came out. It wasn't straight. So it, it kind of bent. But I mean, it doesn't hinder any of the articulation. So that's a good thing. The pins aren't coming out. So that's okay. And then coming down to the boots. Now these boots, um, uh, they're either, I think they're Destro's boots or Mindbender's boots. Not Mindbender's, um, Major Blood's boots. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. But if anybody knows, leave a comment down below for uh, to let me know. I do like the fact that they painted the buckles on the boots. Uh, I'd have to go back and actually take a look. I didn't look. I'm just guesstimating. Uh, on whose boots these belong to, so that means it would be the lower torso. But I'd have to take a peek and find out. Um, they could be Zartans for all I know. But anyway, <laughs> enough of that. But yeah, they did a fabulous job. I think Hasbro did a great, great job when it comes to this guy. He is, he's awesome. What can I say? So let's get this guy set back where he belongs over here. And in that way, we can start taking a look at his um, his accessories that he comes with. Because this guy does come with quite a few things. So let's get started. Starting off, we have Buzzer's Knife. It's just a typical, regular combat knife, military style. I like the way they did the, you know, the round hilt. And then you have the blade, very nice. They painted it, they didn't just leave it all black. So Nice job. Next we have his pistol. It's a nice little nine millimeter. I like the way they did the wrapping on the on the bottom. You have a peg hole for blast effects. You know, no, 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 no other paint aesthetics on it except for the wrap, but otherwise it's a nice little handgun. Next we have Buzzer's swinging pendulum. I like the fact that they put it on a um frozen chain like that instead of an actual chain only because if you if you put him on a motorcycle this is what he would be using to swing at somebody i mean what a wicked weapon to use i mean this guy what <laughs> wow what a wicked wicked weapon to use but yet once again it's a double-edged thing because he can actually hurt himself with this thing too while he's flailing it about next we have his baseball bat and what a genius i mean you can actually see the saw blades, and I know the, the original character came with these things, but you have the, the saw blades that, and, and then this spike at the top uh, that he seated on top of the baseball bat. You can see the, the, the metal coming down, and you got the studs where he put it all together. I mean, it's not welded. It, he used actually, you know, studs to put this thing together with, which is actually pretty cool. And then <clears throat> you have the baseball bat, and then you have the silver wrapping down here at the bottom. I mean, Listen, I mean, I thought a bat with barbed wire was bad enough like Lucille, but this thing here is just straight up deadly. Now, once again, it is a double-edged sword because of the fact that he can get cut too while he's using this thing. But for the most part, I don't think he's going to have that issue because he's probably swinging this thing at somebody when he's riding by on a motorcycle or whatever the case is because what a, what a crazy melee weapon this is. I mean, absolutely, positively, just crazy. And next we have his glasses. And now mine have a little bit of a scratch in the lens, but that's okay because, uh, you know, look, it, it, they're not gonna stay perfect forever. But if you actually look, <clears throat> this one here actually seats more in the lens than this side over here, which is, which is crazy. But overall, I mean, I'm not picking on it. It's, it they're nice, just, you know, you're gonna have to probably stick like a little tack on the back of the of the, of the uh, arms of the glasses to have it stay on his face. They'll stay, but you move him and they just, they'll fall right off. So that's the only reason why I say that. A little tiny piece of double-sided tape or, or um, a little tiny itty bitty piece of tack that you put on there, it'll hold them on there just nicely. But otherwise, it's a great addition that you can actually have these on and remove them. So that's actually cool that they did that. And last but not least, we have Buzzer's Diamond Tooth Chainsaw. Now. I will say this, this is not his M16 with the chainsaw blade on the end, which is kind of disappointing in a way because that would have been cool to have, 
but but this thing rocks i have to say this thing rocks so i don't want you to think i'm being negative when i say that they didn't give him his gun because this here is ingenuity at its finest now if you really take a look it looks like he tore apart <laughs> He tore apart a Gatling gun and he went and he put this big, huge exhaust with, with this governor on there. You have your, you know, your handle with the trigger on there where you squeeze and it's going to go. The handle here at the top, of course, where you would hold the Gatling gun. And yeah, I mean, he just ingenuity at its finest, took it apart and put this, made it into a chainsaw. I've never seen a chainsaw like this. So if there is one out there that's like this that's pretty badass. I mean, that's, that's wicked. And I've seen some crazy chainsaws in my lifetime, but nothing like this one. So this, this here is, is cool. I like the way they did it. We didn't get any paint apps right here. It would have been nice to get a couple splotches of paint, but I guess you can do that yourself. Uh, if you're handy enough, I mean, there's a lot of detail there. If you want it to come out, they did do the, uh, actual blade of the chainsaw, which is nice and the chain itself. So they didn't just make it all silver and just say, okay, well, there you go. I mean, I, they did a beautiful job with it, I have to say, but yeah, I mean, that is just one, one crazy piece of, of, uh, um, of ingenuity and machinery. And there's a hole here for the exhaust. So I guess if you had like a, a smoke effect, you might be able to plug that in there and, and, and have a smoke effect of having it smoking when he's not using it. Ash Williams and Leatherface, eat your hearts out, man. Look at this bad boy. Either way, fighting Joes, fighting Deadites, or just some backward ass country person who's doing all sorts of wrong, this piece of machinery is fabulous. All right, so now that we've gone over the figure and the accessories, and of course, you know, we all know that's just typical, you know, classified articulation. So that's why I stopped doing the articulation because it's all the same. Bend here, look there, go there, this what, that what, you know. So yeah, we got better things to check out than the articulations. We all know it's just pretty much the same. Until they start doing something new, then I'll show it off. Now, with that being said, I picked this guy up off of BBTS, okay? Off of Big Bad Toy Store. If you guys don't know what that is, go check it out. It's a great store. I've been buying a lot of stuff from them throughout the years. Now, I pre-ordered this guy on Hasbro Pulse. Now, being a Pulse member like I am, and like many others are, I got him off of Bad, Big Bad Toy Store first before Pulse. But isn't that the reason why we have Pulse, right? Is so that way we can get our figures first. You're the company, so why would you not? Why would you not make sure that your Pulse members get their stuff first, right? You get to pre-order first, right? So what, we don't pay shipping at that point in time? I'd rather pay the shipping and get my figure first then not i mean what is it four dollars seven dollars extra that you pay <laughs> yeah it's not a big deal doesn't break the bank i'd rather get my figure out first and listen thank god we have places like big bad toy store and stuff like that where you can actually get your stuff ahead of time before the actual manufacturer now that's the thing you guys own this product you make this product but yet you send it to everybody else first before we get it. And I'm not, I'm not banging on you. I'm not banging on you. I'm just saying, if we're paying that Pulse premium, we should be getting our stuff before any third-party distribution is getting them out. But hey, that's not the way you guys are working it. That's fine. You're just gonna have people that are gonna get their pre-orders somewhere else, get them early, and then cancel theirs. So, yeah. Um, with that being said, I mean, I, I, I was so excited for this guy to come out. I don't want to digress and, and ramble on because I'm not here to beat up on Hasbro or anything like that. I mean, so far, I mean, you know, they went back a step and then they moved forward a step. So as long as they keep putting out great stuff like this, you're going to hear nothing but positivity about this line. I want to see it succeed. I really do. I mean, I'm excited for the other Dreadnoughts. I'm excited for Quick Kick and Alpine and Doc. Absolutely excited for those. Been waiting for them. Now... With that being said, I was ex I've was i been waiting for them since the start of the line when they showed the photos of the G.I. Joe classified line that was coming out. Buzzer was one of them. And it took a long time for us to get him. But now he's here. So that's the cool thing is that 
when you get them that you've been waiting and they're here and they're done beautifully, you, you know, there's, there's, it's awesome because then you put it with your, 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 the rest of your collection, like Zartan, Zarana. If they make a Xandar, that'll be great. But can you guys please make it to where they color change? They're supposed to color change, man. Make it to where you put them in the sunlight. Look back in the day. You can still do it. We know you can. Super 7 did it. You can do it. Now, besides that, here we have him. He's reminiscent of the old. I can't wait until Ripper comes out. Um, he came out at the same time as this guy. So I, I, I mean, for, up for pre-order. That's what I'm saying with that. But I'm excited. And I can't wait for Torch. And then I'll have the original trio of Dreadnoughts. Uh, along with Zartan and Zarana. And if they make a Xandar, I'll pick them up. Depending on how Monkey Wrench or um, Thrasher, I think his name was, depending on how they are, so be it. By the time Nagahide came out, I didn't even really care at that point. I was just pretty much done. But the original trio Dreadnoughts, those are the ones that are that I'm that I'm looking for. Those are the ones I'm looking to get, and I have one so far. So enough of that. Uh, let's get into some comparisons and see how he compares to a couple other figures in this line. Here's how Buzzer compares to the uh, Jada Toys Chun-Li and the Marvel Legends Black Widow. And here's how Buzzer compares to the G.I. Joe classified Cobra Python Patrol Vipra. And here's how Buzzer compares to the G.I. Joe Classified series, Red Ninjas. All right, so in conclusion, I have to say, this has got to be one of the best Hasbro figures in this line, okay? Hasbro has made a lot of great figures in this line so far, but in my opinion, this has got to be one of the best ones right up there along with... Uh, Major Blood, Slaughter, Serpentor. Now listen, I'm not saying that, you know, that they didn't have their issues, but these are some of the best sculpts so far. I mean, we have some really, really good ones that in this line so far, like Spirit, I mean, Rock and Roll. I mean, I, I could keep going on and on and on and on and on, but I'm not gonna keep doing that because we're gonna be here all day long this guy here let me tell you he rocks I mean he's a great looking figure from head to toe Hasbro has done a very 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 great awesome amazing job when it came to doing this there's a few pet peeves like the peg holes which I can overlook and this leg kind of being warped off to the side a little bit. But like I said, it doesn't hinder any of his articulation. So which therefore, I might not like it. Maybe I can heat it up. Maybe I can adjust it, cool it down. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. But for the most part, standing on the shelf or getting him into poses, he's going to be fine. So I'm not really too concerned when it comes to that. He's not falling apart. His arms aren't coming off. So that I can honestly say I'm happy about that. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this review on the G.I. Joe Classified Buzzer. Please like, subscribe, share, and as always, leave a comment down below. Hit that notification bell so you never miss out on anything new that I'm putting up. And I'll catch you all on the flippity flip. 100%. From 1 to 100, I give it 100. That was good.